Welcome to the Weekly Market Wrap-Up, I'm Hannah Bernard. First off, for all our American friends, we hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and we wish you good luck today braving the lines on Black Friday. And speaking of black, black gold tops the news this week as the price of oil continues to plummet. How did the markets handle it? Let's find out. U.S. stocks stalled slightly this week after the major indices set new record highs on Monday and then hovered around the edges until finally knocking off Wednesday for an extended Thanksgiving long weekend. So let's turn now to Canadian markets, which were open on Thursday and continue to feel the pinch from the ever-plunging price in oil. Energy stocks put pressure on the Toronto stock market Thursday as the OPEC cartel considered to what to do about plunging oil prices. The Toronto Stock Exchange plummeted 116 points to close at 14,922. The TSX Venture Exchange was hit particularly hard on Thursday, losing 2% in overall value, closing down 15.61 points to 755.45. All right, to the big news driving the markets, oil and what seems to be a total freefall in price, which is now just under $70 a barrel. Since this summer, the price has dropped about 30%, and while there had been hopes OPEC would cut production in order to put a floor under prices, those hopes were dashed Thursday after OPEC oil ministers announced they would keep production unchanged at 30 million barrels a day. Following the news, January crude contract price plummeted $4.26, or almost 6%, to $69.43 per barrel in late afternoon trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. That's a four and a half year low for the price of oil. Analysts say the fall in price is due because of a lower demand, a glut in supply, and a strengthening U.S. greenback. And while the U.S. dollar is staying strong, the drop in oil prices is taking a big chunk out of the Canadian dollar, which plunged 0.75 of a cent on Thursday to 88.25 U.S. Lower oil prices are starting to bite into Canadian provincial finances. The Alberta government now expects a barrel of oil to trade at an average of $75 a barrel for the rest of its fiscal year, which ends March 2015. Alberta's energy sector generally accounts for about 25% of the province's total revenue. And now to winners and losers in our picks for the week. The winner for this week is Vigil Inc, ticker symbol VGGL. Shares in the rewards-based company led gainers on the NASDAQ, shooting up 29% on Wednesday, re-establishing the upward trend it's been on all month. Vigil's interactive technology rewards users for viewing movies and TV shows, as well as for listening to and matching music. Users earn points they can redeem for consumer products on the Vigil store. And the loser for this week is Lakeland Industries Inc, ticker symbol LAKE. We've been following this company since early fall and the onset of the Ebola crisis. Lakeland produces hazardous materials, protective gear for healthcare workers treating Ebola patients. In just the past two months, the company has twice appeared in Winners and Losers, once on each side of the coin. This week, they are our loser again. On Wednesday, shares dropped 13% on disappointing earning results despite an Ebola-driven increase in orders. The company announced this week a steep decline in earnings per share in the most recent quarter in comparison to its performance from the same quarter a year ago. Analysts say this company has not demonstrated a clear trend in earnings over the past two years, making it difficult to accurately predict earnings for the coming year. TheStreet.com now rates Lakeland Industries as a hold. All right, that's enough about this week. Now let's turn to BayStreet.ca's look at the week ahead and the snapshot of what analysts are forecasting for companies whose earning reports are coming out next week. Here are three U.S. stocks to watch. First up on Monday is Thor Industries, Inc. with an EPS forecast of 81 cents compared to 68 cents in the prior year quarter. Next up on Wednesday is Abercrombie and Fitch Co. with an EPS forecast of 41 cents compared to 52 cents in the prior year quarter. Last week, Abercrombie announced a franchise agreement with Grupo AXO to establish a retail store presence in Mexico. Finally, on Thursday is Smith & Wesson Holding Corp with an EPS forecast of $0.07 cents compared to $0.28 cents in the prior year quarter. And now here are three Canadian stocks to watch next week. First up on Monday is Reitman's Canada Limited with an EPS forecast of $0.11 cents compared to $0.09 cents in the prior year quarter. 
The chain announced this week it plans to close 107 smart set stores over the next 12 to 18 months. Next up on Wednesday is Royal Bank of Canada with an EPS forecast of $1.58 compared to $1.31 in the prior quarter. And finally on Thursday is Toronto Dominion Bank with an EPS forecast of $1.05 compared to $0.95 in the prior quarter. And that wraps it up. Thanks again so much for joining us for another weekly market wrap-up. Before you head out, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast on iTunes and find us on Facebook and on Twitter. For Val Network News and BayStreet.ca, I'm Hannah Bernard.